Here's a superhero that's about to go supernova. Here's a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, the new 52 gold label collection, Captain Atom. Grounded ASAF pilot Nathaniel Adam found work at the Continuum, a research facility run by quantum physicist Dr. Megala. Megala wanted Nate to pilot an experimental capsule designed to travel to other dimensions. When activated, the capsule imploded, destroying Nate at a subatomic level. Nate soon reappeared and discovered he had become a living nuclear reactor with the ability to manipulate the quantum field. General Wade Ealing insisted that Nate was now a military asset and a living weapon of mass destruction. Nate refused to cooperate and instead those to serve the world as Captain Adam. Just before we look at Adam and all of his accessories, I'd like to first thank the folks over at McFarland Toys. Yes, that did provide this sample we're about to have a look at. Following to that, let's grab the tape measure and see how tall the figure stands. Captain Adam, in this case, is about 7 inches in height, or the figure is going to be about 18 centimeters tall. I feel like if I'm going to compare Captain Adam with anybody, it would make the most sense to compare it along with Superman. Now, I may not have chosen the best Superman for the job. That's the DC Rebirth one. Clearly a bigger, bulkier build than the slightly smaller build that we got with Captain Adam here. Maybe compare him with something a little bit more similar in size. Here's what the figure looks like with the recently looked at Batman Nightfall. Another figure, though, I did want to compare him with involves me having to slide over soups for a second. I did also want to bring in the gold label edition DC Classics Blue Beetle, a figure we just recently had a look at. The real reason why, in fact, I wanted to bring this figure in is because it seems to be that they're using the exact same body. Not maybe, though, the head, but obviously the arms, the torso, the legs, and even the hands are shared from both Blue Beetle to Captain Adam as well. Bodies and the obvious display stand in front of them are the only things that get shared with Blue Beetle, as, of course, Captain Adam comes included with a unique trading card and equally unique constructs that attach to the ends of his forearms. Before we look at the things to the side, let's look at the thing to the front. Same Z's department, the figure comes included with, yes, the same black display stand that has still the familiar DC logo down below and an equally familiar peg to the far corner of this that can attach the either feet, either boots of Captain Adam. Going to move that to the side. More now to the unique things. The figure comes in clue with a rather interesting trading card. This one actually depicts the character more from New 52, which isn't quite really the likeness that they're going with when they molded this particular figure. I feel like with this Captain Adam, he actually gets more closer to his classic roots than maybe the more outrageous, almost Iceman look that he has from the New 52. Either way, flipping around to the back. The real name in this case is Nathaniel Adam. That's sometimes hard to get out. And of course, there is a quite substantial read-up. You can pause and read for yourself if you want. I read this at the beginning. You're okay. We're going to move those to the side. The figure also, as I already mentioned, come include with energy constructs, which, though speaking of Iceman, has a very more ice sort of look to them. They're a fairly thicker, harder plastic than I was expecting. In fact, like the larger one, I was even thinking it was going to be a little bit more bendable than what it was. But they're using more of a translucent, almost off-bluish tinted plastic. And these do fit around his arms. I don't necessarily say that there's a unique way that they have to be on like one side of the figure's body or, you know, they have to be on one or the other. I guess you could technically fit them on either side if you wanted to. Though with some of these, they fit a little bit better. Like the larger one, for example, you're not actually even sliding. I'm talking ahead of myself here. You're not actually even taking this and sliding this onto the arm. You're actually more so just sort of clipping this around his forearm. And then this just basically fits around his arm like this. Uh, you can then take the other side, and I find it actually helps just to kind of pry this one slightly more open to fit that around his hand. And then again, you're just going to move that up his form, and the figure can be displayed like this. Now, let's just say for that you wanted to flip these around, you don't like the way the configuration I have right now. You can, in theory, again, just bend these and rotate them around. But honestly, I do find like the constructs work a little bit better on the other side, but if you wanted to, of course, you can just display it on this side also as well. Nothing's necessarily preventing you from following the format that I'm doing. Yeah, if you wanted to flip them around, you can also do that as well. So let's go take ahead, go ahead and take those off for right now. We're going to put those aside. I'm sure they're probably going to be coming back a little bit later into this review. Getting though a closer look at Captain Adam, I gotta say I really like the look of this figure. Uh, of course, like as most of the uh, iterations, iterations of this character, both in cartoon and comics, he's generally more a silver-cladded character. 
Now they've nicely done the silver here on the figure. There are a few little areas admittingly, like the front of his torso, for example, and the shoulders that have sort of the marbling that go along with sometimes mixing this type of plastic together. It usually often happens when they do metallic plastics. Not even just talking McFarland's team, but really across the board. Any company that usually is known to make metallic plastics tend to usually leave the plastic with a little bit of marbling. So like there's a little bit here on the shoulder. I see a lot more of it though, really running across the front. He's kind of got this, oh, you can see right there, this line that runs across the top of his chest. And he's got some very visibly uh, visible marbling there on the top of his shoulder. Doesn't honestly bother me too much by the con the construction of this character anyways. He sort of is sort of a, an always generating uh, character's shell. So yeah, it makes a little more sense to me that, you know, honestly, it doesn't bother me at all. The fact he does have this like, a little bit of marbling there on the on the plastic itself. The face itself, I will say, is really good. Uh, possibly, though, by the fact that they had decided to use, say, the Blue Beetle body, which, again, like to look at the torsos, they are exactly the same. The arms are the same. And actually, uh, just prior to hitting the record, I, I wanted to switch the hands out to show you that the hands are exa exactly the same as well. Like, even the hand that, for example, he was going to be holding the grapple gun with. So happens to also be the same hand that they use for Captain Adam. So it is maybe the exact same sized body. Obviously, it is the exact same body when you look at them back to back like this. The only thing about it, though, is by making him a small frame like this, he does look a little bit smaller, obviously, when you compare him with the like of Superman. The thing about it, though, is I don't know if I would have gone with a bigger body than this, because like the next body up tends to be kind of like that eradicator body. And I think that like the proportions sometimes don't always work with certain characters. That same body was also used for Superman Infected. I believe it was also used for as well Bizarro. But I just don't think like the body would have worked as well for Captain for Captain Adam. So like maybe, though, while he is a little more thinner and slimmer, I think maybe this is probably the better body they could have gone with when it came, comes to the figure itself. Now, going though back to his face sculpt, which again, I really like the darker color of the, the black that they did around his eyes. It really does help to pop, considering like this character really has mostly all silver from head to toe. He, of course, has a little star symbol that he has on the front of his chest. It's painted quite well, sort of more in a darker, though muted, kind of burgundy. The burgundy is also something that carries over also to his gloves. He also has it for his pegs as well. Now, the thing about the pegs, I've noticed on mine, and I also went back and looked at the Blue Beetle as well. I don't know if they've actually changed the pegs, but you'll notice like there's a little gap space in between. It doesn't seem to necessarily interfere with any bit of the posability when it comes to the hands, but I noticed like there's a little more of a slot right there in the middle of the peg. A little small detail. I don't know why I even felt the need to point out. He get, it does, does have, again, like the softer plastic used for his lower lower trunks. Of course, then you've got the harder plastic for the rest of it. There is a little bit of a breakup, like if I just move his arms out of the way, for example, where like the arms, the torso, and the legs don't quite seem to be the same type of silver, at least, that they've used for the trunks. And that's just, again, because like the trunks themselves are softer plastic. Lower down from that, of course, he does have the blue boots. So, like, again, there's really not a lot of color on Captain Al Captain Adam's design, but all the colors that they put to the figure look and work really well with the figure itself. For the figure's articulation, going back to, once again, his head sculpt that rotates all the way around. If you're familiar by now with the Blue Beetle body, or really, I guess for that matter, all the DC Multiverse figures tend to have this same level of articulation, then you already know all the territory that we're about to cover. The head being on a ball joint does allow the head to look up, down, and rock back and forth. And of course, the obvious one is you can rotate it all the way around. Arms do come out once again at 90 degrees. In fact, actually with this body build, you can bring the arms a little higher than that. And of course they do allow the arms to rotate all the way around on both the sides. Figure does have a bicep swivel. Uh, of course he does have that little socket joint, the little cup joint that they put to conceal over the way that the arms are pegged in place. And in a way you could technically also bring these out just a little bit. And you can also make like Captain, a Captain Adam look a little bit bigger and broader in the torso. I mean, it's all—it's only obviously going to work if you have the arms out as much as I have right now. You can, though, kind of bring those arms out just a little bit. And that will fill out his frame just a little bit more if you want to go that route. Uh, though, where do we leave off? His arm biceps do swivel. Yes, that's where we left off. The double hinge on the elbow, of course. Uh, just before we actually look at the rest of the figure's articulation, while it looks like he's kind of patting himself on the back, I did also want to draw your attention to the fact that they clearly have used a different kind of plastic for his elbows and very more obviously apparent though. You notice that you'll notice it also there on his knees. I don't know why they didn't use actually the same type type of plastic because I can't imagine they would have painted this. Why they would have not then used the same silver here for his knees. The knees and the elbows clearly look to be a different kind of plastic altogether. 
maybe it was maybe a worry that they may have had that maybe like this type of plastic would not have worked as well for a joint i don't know but either way though it does look like it's clearly yeah a different color altogether hands rotate all the way around you can also hinge them back and forth the figure's body has an upper torso ball joint and a quite generous ball joint at the base of the abdomen as well though the whole time you're doing this you're probably going to feel yourself squeezing his trunks that doesn't sound so right. Legs do split out. There's a ratchet joint once again inside those. You can bring the legs forward and bring the legs back. There is also a mild swivel just by the construction of the figure that you can rotate the top of the thigh. Double hinge though on the very obvious knee, different plastic that they've used. No articulation down below here to the boot. Now with the blue beetle, of course, the boots were the same as the calves. So they've just carried over that same, that same mindset, the same sculpt set as the blue beetle before. And of course, then he does have the ankle articulation. You can move it back and forth this way. You can rock in fact back and forth this way and the figure also has again the appreciated toe articulation it's again a really nice looking figure i'm glad to finally see a captain adam make his way now to plastic form at least under the banner of dc multiverse just get this guy to stand and while though yeah really he is just still the same mold brother as this guy right here i don't mind occasionally we get ourselves a, a, a figure a brand new figure if it means they have to use the mold again I don't think it's at the level of Marvel Legends, for example. And that's one of the frustrations I always had with the line was the fact that they use the body again and again and again. McFarlane doesn't do that as much when it comes to his releases. Yeah, occasionally you might get the, still the same figure carry over a body that, that was already used before. But if it does mean that we also get two figures now using the same body, I'm okay really with that idea. Even though, really, I could use one of the extra ones I have laying around. I'm surprised, actually, that Captain Adam didn't come and play with a flight stand. I've noticed, in fact, less and less of these figures are coming with flight stands, rather just defaulting instead to the black circular stands that they all seem to be packaged with nowadays. Now, even though the figure doesn't have the capabilities of flight, at least for right now, he has still managed to get himself a couple of energy constructs, which have attached onto either one of his arms. Uh, I want to say attached. It's not the case where you're actually sliding the hands in like gloves. You're rather instead actually just clipping them onto the forearms. Now, I've got them configured like this. If you wanted to flip them around, by all means, you could do that as well. It doesn't seem like they have to belong on one side versus the other. Easily, if you want to just flip it around the opposite of the configuration I have, you can also do that as well. Now, this particular figure I already mentioned is using the still same body as the gold label edition DC Classics Blue Beetle. And, you know, again, I'm okay with that. It does, though, mean that this Captain Adam, in comparison to the Man of Steel, is a little more leaner and slimmer. He doesn't have the big and the bulk that maybe Superman would have. I know in the comics and obviously in the Justice League cartoon, Captain Adam not only had similar strengths as Superman, I mean, he's one of the more powerful heroes in the DC Universe, but he also had a same similar body. And you can't quite mirror that when it comes to this plastic release of Captain Adam. He's a little bit more leaner than Superman, which I guess isn't a bad thing at all. Because the other the other option, they could have gone the route of using like the Superman infected body. Those bigger, bulkier bodies we looked at also on the Eradicator, I don't think would have worked as well for Captain Adam. Captain Adam should be a little bit more of a muscular, yet though slimmer body. And I think using the Blue Beetle was probably the best way they could have gone. It just though means, it brings more to the attention that the fact that Superman is just a little too big. And maybe at one point we may get ourselves like a DC Classics Superman that's a little bit more sized to what we're getting here with Captain Atom. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comment section. All in all, I really think this guy turned out nice. Even though really the card is advertising this guy's new 52, I don't really see new 52 when I'm looking at the body. He looks to me just like, I honestly think they just could have called this guy DC Classics uh, Captain Adam instead of calling him the new 52. Either way though, what do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comment section. Is this something you guys could see yourselves picking up and adding it to your collection? Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample of the brand new DC Multiverse, New 52 Captain Adam, that we can have a look at in this review. Speaking of reviews, if you don't mind me doing this, if you guys liked the one you just finished watching, why not throw it a like? It just involves moving up and hitting that thumbs up button. And also as well, if you are new to this channel and you want to stick around for more, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. You're also turning on the bell notification. Sorry, what? You got a little bit of extra time on your hands? Well then, come sit down, grab yourself, help yourself to the snacks I've got to the table over there. Make sure also, if you have a little bit of time, you want to check out more. At the very end of this video, plugging a playlist will also be a playlist popping up of all the other things I've looked at for DC Multiverse in the past, the current, the present, right now. And all the stuff in the future will all be showing up in that playlist if you guys want to check that out. Of course, more DC Multiverse reviews will be coming your way, so keep your peepers peeled to this channel. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.